Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Classic Mini DIY today. On today's episode, we are going to be putting together the majority of the gearbox casing. So that's everything inside the gearbox. So let's get to it. So on the last episode, we got our main shaft all put together. As you can see, we've got all our gears on here. Everything's looking nice and fresh, but we're missing the final motion output as well as the double roller bearings and everything like that. And that has to go in after we assemble some stuff inside this gearbox casing. So let's jump over to the gearbox casing and I'll show you what we need to do next. So to give you a quick overview, keep in mind that I will be posting the links to all of these parts in my description below. But what you're looking at is your gear selectors here, your pinion gear, which fits inside this pinion retainer, um, your reverse shaft, this is what your reverse gear actually sits on. You have a whole bunch of various sized needle roller bearings. Those are used in various different applications throughout this, uh, throughout this build. Most of them will go in the lay shaft, and then you have a small one that also goes in your final motion shaft here. Then moving on, you have the post that holds your selectors, your reverse gear, your actual selector forks. These are what wrap around the synchro hubs and actually shift it into gear. You have your shaft right over here that these forks actually mount up to. You have another gear that goes on your main shaft. I forget that what this one is called. You have your gear selector housing as well as the shaft here that meets into these gear selectors. Um, you have your speedo gear. And then finally, you have your lay shaft and your lay gear. Now, I know that that is probably super overwhelming. Don't worry, this is kind of like everything all at once, but what we're gonna do is take it step by step, and I'll show you how to put all that stuff into your actual gearbox over here. Keep in mind, you will also need a double roller bearing and a single roller bearing that are made for your main shaft. The single goes on the outside here and is held in with the circlip and then you have your double roller that goes in over here inside your transmission. So before we get started, people will ask, did I paint this? Did I do anything special with this? And on the Bad Wolf build, I used a Pour 15 engine enamel. I don't think that I'm gonna do that again. I didn't really like the finish for the transmission. I think it came out really well on the block, but down here instead, what I did is I just simply used a clear coat engine enamel. So it's gonna prevent oil from seeping into that aluminum, but it is also going to preserve the really nice color of just freshly cleaned aluminum. So um, let's rotate this around and get into it. All right, to start off, we are gonna take our gear selector shaft, and now this is the shaft that connects to your actual gear selector on the back of your car, and uh, this is the housing for that gear selector. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and slide those together. As you can see, it doesn't fall out the bottom, and uh, that's how those go together there. And what you do is you actually install it from the inside, so you let it in through this hole right here. You just go find this on the other side, and you slide your whole selector shaft right through that housing there. So there, that is now in there. Next up, what we're gonna be doing is installing the sleeve for our detent spring. Now this came out of the transmission. Now this sleeve slides into this hole right here and now it needs to go in there. And if it's sticking out like that, that means that it's not in all the way. And what you have to do is rotate this housing, move it around until you can get that in there all the way. There we go. So what that will do is ensure that that gets locked in there. And now this is only really gonna move in the way that it's supposed to. Your shifter can come all the way out down here, but for the most part, this is locked into place now. Now with this in, we are gonna do one thing that I forgot to mention and do before we started this, and that's putting the plate into the bottom hole here. Now, now this post looks just like this and it gets pressed in. Now, there is an O-ring on this that should help with oil leakage, but what I've seen people doing these days is actually putting a little bit of Permatex gasket sealer on there before they put this in here, and that is gonna help keep that nice and tight and sealed. So I'm definitely gonna do that here. Now keep in mind, you don't wanna go wild and crazy with your Permatex. Just put a nice little bead down here. And let's go ahead and slide this in here. And now, like I said, that has to get pressed in. The best way that I have found to put these in is using a rubber mallet. All right, and with that in place, you can see that in the case there. 
Now what we need to do is make sure that our gear selector shaft isn't too far forward like this, way out crazy in the front or way in the back. It needs to be in the middle position, so perfectly in the middle right there. All right, so now once you've got that pressed in there, next we're gonna install our shift linkages here or our shifting, I guess, forks. I'm not really sure what this is called, but you start off with the actual pivot bushing. So that is this piece right here. This is gonna slide down on there and it should move freely on there. If it's binding or anything like that, then you have a problem. Now, the next thing that we want to do is install our reverse gear selector or reverse gear mover. This goes right down on there. Keep in mind that you want this to line up with your shift selector. And now that sitting down on there, nice and pretty. And if we rotate this, you can see how that is actuated now. Nice, cool. All right, so this next part is easy to mix up. So there are two versions of this little uh, of this little selector here. There is a lower version and an upper version. The lower version is tapered on both sides of the selector here. And then on the upper version, it's only tapered on the top side. Another way you can tell is that the slightly larger one is going to be on top and the smaller one is gonna be on the bottom. So we've put our spacer on there. The next thing we're gonna do is put the lower one on, just like that should move and then we're going to take another one of these spacers and go ahead and install that and then last we're going to put the upper one on just like that after that we're going to take our washer install that right on the top here all right and then after that washer you're going to install a lock nut right down on top of that unfortunately i don't have a locking nut with me right now so i'm going to skip that step for right now i am going to continue to build this but don't worry, I am gonna be putting a locking nut on it. You'll see it pop in here in just a minute. So the next thing that we're gonna do is install our gear selector shaft. And notice there's a small hole in it right here. That is gonna go on this side of your gearbox. So you can see the big opening over there. And this hole is gonna go over here. And I'll explain why in a minute. Now the first gear selector that goes in is your first and second gear selector. That is gonna go down here. And notice there's a small notch right there. That notch goes right over the top of that gear selector. Now you have your selector fork for third and fourth gear and you've got a small notch here goes down at the bottom and goes on the bottom gear selector fork this one that's poking out just at the bottom there now this is important because this hole right here has to line up with the hole on your gear selector fork here and this allows a small pin to go through and to hold it into place and to keep this from rotating everything out of position so so let's first start with our first and second gear selector fork. We're gonna slide our shaft through here. And then it just pokes out the other side there. And then we're gonna take our third and fourth gear selector. Like I said, we're gonna set that down around the gear selector on the bottom. And now I'm gonna have to move this around a little bit to make my life a little bit easier. So give me just a second. Now, once you have your gear selectors in here, you know, you've got everything kind of lined up um, all in the place that it needs to be. Um, the next thing that we need to do is install the roll pin right down here on your actual gear selector fork. Now, a roll pin looks like this. It's just a special little pin that has a little cutout in it and you hammer it through and it holds things in place. Now, in this case, the easiest way to line this up is to get a small drift or a punch and uh, line that up so you can see that it's lined up in that shaft now, just like that. Take that, take that out. And then we'll go ahead and set our pin right down inside that hole in that shaft. And to get this driven in, you do need a, a hammer and a punch. I find the easiest is a nice long punch, just like this. Set it right on top of that roll pin and give it a few taps until it's in there. All right, and so with that in there, now all of this stuff is nice and stuck in there. So, so this is actually a great opportunity to see how this would select the Synchro Hub. So you've got it in neutral right now, and if we go up on our gear selector here and rotate it that direction, you get you select your second gear. If you go this direction, you select first. If we rotate it down, we can select third and then fourth. And then if we go all the way down, we can select our reverse gear just like this. So 
Let's go ahead and keep that in neutral like that. And now we're gonna install our reverse gear. Now installing your reverse gear is not very difficult. Your reverse gear looks like this and it has a taper on it just like this and that taper is going that direction so towards this cavity over here and uh, it kind of looks like an arrow I guess pointing in that direction and this is going to go down right here in your casing. Now in order to do that you need to rotate this down and push this selector all the way forward and this is effectively like you're selecting your reverse gear. Now this is gonna get set down right in there um, with the groove of your selector on top of that reverse gear there. Um, you can go ahead and just set that down. And then we're gonna take our reverse shaft with this notch right here pointing that direction. So over towards that cavity as well. And that, will, and that should just slide right through the casing and into place here. And now that'll go right through your reverse gear there. And it, and it shouldn't go any farther than where it's at right there, but you can kind of just play it, make sure that moves nice and freely on it. And, and you can test this here by seeing how your reverse gear engages and disengages just like that. Now the notch on that reverse gear on the other side there, that is gonna be important in a little bit later step, but I won't get into that right now. Um, the next thing that we're gonna do is get a new nut for this uh, selector system right here and get that tightened down. And then we're gonna put our main shaft in and our lay gear and all sorts of different stuff. All right, so like I said, I did get myself another nut here and I'm gonna go ahead and put that on. And now keep in mind that this does not need to go on here gorilla tight, but you do want it snug. All right, and now that we have all of that laid out, ready to roll, the next step is the main shaft. So let's get that and we'll put it in here. Now, one thing I do wanna mention is that normally at this point, you might want to put in your oil uh, filter. Well, it's not really your oil filter, it's a screener so that it picks up oil from down here in the corner. Now, on every gearbox that I rebuild, I always put a center oil pickup because there's just no reason in my mind not to do this. Now what this does is it moves the collection point for your oil from over here to here, which is the center of the case. And the benefit of that is, so if you were taking a hard corner to the right, so taking a right turn really hard, all the oil is gonna slosh over to this side over here. And when that happens, you have the potential to starve your oil screener over here uh, of oil and that could ultimately starve your engine of oil which would then lead to premature bearing failure. Now with the central pickup, just to kind of like mock this up so you have an idea what it's gonna look like, this gets pushed down in here and as you can see, it collects oil from over here and it still mounts up to the same place although it only takes one bolt hole instead of two and that's pretty much how that gets laid out. Now this is hard to put in with your leg gear. It kind of has to all go in as one unit, which I will show you guys here in a little while once we get to that step of the build. But for right now, let's go ahead and take this oil screener back out. So now we have our big, cool, fancy main shaft that we put together in the last episode. And this goes in with the shorter end pointing out towards the side over here where you don't have a big open cavity. And then you have this long end and this long end goes into this slot here. So let's go ahead and set this down in here, just like that. And that gets set down into those, those selector forks. So it'll be kind of free right now until we put the bearing, uh, bearing races in there. But one thing I do wanna call out is that the bulk ring is already installed here. So this was done in the last episode and I'm gonna go ahead and reposition that. And the next step is our final motion shaft. Now this final motion shaft needs a needle roller inside it. So let's go ahead and grab our small needle roller. We're gonna go ahead and set that down into that shaft. We're gonna slide it right over this last part of the main shaft. Now at this point, we're gonna need to install both of our bearing carrying races. So let's get one and I'll show you what I mean. Now the single race is the one that goes on the outside here. And as you can see, there's a small lip on it here. That is gonna go on the outside and that should kind of uh, slide into place here. Now obviously this is not just gonna like pop into place because this is does the job of holding this shaft kind of in place on this side and the other side obviously gets held in by the other bearing. So at this point, what you have to do is hammer this bearing race in. So you need to take a punch 
and you need to set it on this edge right here and you're gonna hammer around this and hammer it in. Now, this is loud, this is gonna take some time, so let's jump into the time lapse. All right, so now we have that carrier in place, but this needs to get held in by a circlip. Now, circlip goes in here and you need a special circlip tool to pull this together and it goes into a small groove inside there. Now, the way that you know that this is in place and where it needs to be is this will go in, it'll pop in, and you'll see that here in just a second. This will need to be able to move inside there, otherwise there's too much tension on it. So let's go ahead and get that in there. All right, and so with that, we have our first motion bearing here installed. Now, the next step is to install the opposite side. So let's rotate this around. All right, so the next part is installing your double roller bearing. And there's two things that you need. You need your double roller bearing, and notice there is a groove in it. And there is a special clip that goes into this groove. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this off screen real quick. All right, so we have our ring in the groove just like that. Now this can usually be reused off of your old roller bearing. So if you are taking one off, go ahead and keep that. Um, but if not, these can be picked up at 7 Mini Parts or Guessworks. So this goes on here. Once you set it on there, all that's left to do is go ahead and drift it into place. And you do that with a punch, just like on the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quickly. Now, the way that you'll know this is in is by that little ring, it'll be all the way up against the uh, inside of this case here. Now that takes some effort, so don't worry if you are you know, hammering away at that thing and it's tough. It's, it's gonna take a little bit of time, but it will go on and it will get in there. It's, uh, it is definitely not impossible. All right, so next step, we're gonna install our lay shaft with our lay gear, and we wanna make sure that this goes in here nice and tight, nice and, uh, nice and easy, and that does. So we can pull that out. Now for this part of the install, you are gonna need one small needle roller and one large needle roller. And uh, the smaller one goes on the end here and then one large one right there. And so the lay shaft slides through and this lay gear gets kind of rolled into place here um, and into the lay shaft. Um, it's not terribly difficult, but uh, it will be a little bit of finagling with the center oil pickup. But let's go ahead and do that now. And now, additionally, there are two thrust washers that you do have to get in here as well. You have a larger thrust washer, and this one sits on this side right here. So that sits right in the case there, and then you have your other leg gear, and it hangs out right over here. Now, these are gonna be a little loose, which is fine, and one thing that I have found that's really helpful in getting these to stay in place is a little bit of cam lube on the outside faces so that it kind of sticks to the side. Now, keep in mind, with these shims, you might have to get a different shim or add some shims into these to make sure that they have the right clearance. So once we get these in, we'll measure them and make sure that it's the right clearance and I'll show you guys how to, uh, how to shim that up if it's necessary. All right, and so now that is just kind of sitting down in there and what we're gonna do is slide our lay shaft in. So this is gonna come in from the back, just like that and you might need to kind of wiggle this just a little bit to make everything fall into exactly the right place. So now that will pop out the other side. Sometimes it's a little difficult to get everything lined up just right. And uh, I am reasonably confident that this is gonna be within clearance. It was pretty damn tight in there, um, but Let's go ahead and check that clearance just to be double, double sure. So when we're checking this clearance, what we're looking for is 0 .00, between 0 .002 and 0 .006 thou. So um, I generally just start with two, see if we're in clearance there, and it looks like that will fit in there. So that is, we're not quite down that tight, that tight of clearance, which would have been pretty cool. Let's jump up to 0 .004 and see where we're at. So we do have 0 .004 of clearance. Let's hope we're not outside of six. Let's go up to 0 .006. 
and it does fit a .006 in there. Now, now in this case, what I'm gonna do is get some shims. Now, these shims were actually provided to me by Guessworks. They, they are all varying thicknesses, so what I'm going to do is take the leg gear out and I'm gonna run one of these shims down in there so that we can tighten this up. I'm gonna get one of the thicker shims um, since we're pretty far out of clearance. So what we'll do is we'll actually take all of this sha the shaft back out, take the leg gear back out as well, unfortunately, and we'll take this thrust washer off the back here. Now, what we're gonna do is add a shim behind that thrust washer. And so what I'll do is add a shim to the back of this here, and I'm gonna push this back on to where it was, just like that. And then we'll go back through the steps of putting this uh, center oil pickup back in here, then roll the lay shaft back down. All right, and so now that's passed through, and let's go ahead and check that clearance again. So I know for sure it's gonna be under .006 now, but let's go ahead and test to see what it is. So we're at .003, which is perfect. That's right within spec, and now what we can do is button up this whole end of our lay shaft here. And so now that we have the lay shaft in here, what we need to do is line up the grooves on our reverse gear uh, shaft right here and our lay gear shaft and uh, and then we're gonna use this little keyway which is gonna ultimately get locked into place with a nut which is ultimately gonna get locked into place with this little uh, with this little unit here um, you can actually see where the the keyway gets screwed in and locked into place and and so to do this let's go ahead and rotate this around which might be a little tough here And so that goes in just like that. And now it's kind of loose right now, which is fine. We are gonna need to push it out so, so we can get a shim into our pinion retainer right here. Now this goes behind this little retainer right here and gets screwed in, but we are gonna need to check the clearance on that as well. And for this whole setup, it really needs to be under five thou, so 0 0.005. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and stick the shim that came out of there back in, but I will say that it is a good idea to have some extras of these when you're doing this. It's just gonna make your life a little easier in the event that you need to shim it up any. So let's go ahead and set this in here. And we can make this kind of stay in place with this little retaining, uh, retaining clip. It does help out in that way. And then we're gonna take our pinion retainer, I'm gonna slide it over here, and let's go ahead and put these bolts in here. All right, so one thing I did do just now as a, as a mistake, I actually put this in upside down. So we're gonna flip that over. Um, it's easy to do because, well, it's almost the same on both sides. All right, and so let's go ahead and check this. So first we'll just go ahead and start at, you know, its highest threshold, which would be 0.005. and we can't fit a 0 .005 in there at all. Now, once that's nice and tight, we, you know, our gearbox is in pretty good shape so far. I mean, you can see things are really starting to rotate in here and uh, it's getting pretty exciting, right guys? So let's just double check these one more time. And now we're gonna wanna knock up these lock tabs right here. So let's go ahead and get some pliers in there and we'll lock those up. All right, and with that, all that's left on this side is to install our actual pinion gear. This pinion gear has a special washer. We go ahead and slide that over. It notches into the actual uh, main shaft here, assuming we can get it to meet up. And then we take our pinion gear and no matter which way we put it, it's always got the gears facing in the same direction. So we can go ahead and slide that on here, just like that. And then the last thing is our big old pinion nut. Now this thing needs to get really, really torqued down. For right now, I'm gonna just spin that on hand tight. Obviously we need to torque that down, but when it's not in gear like this, it does make it a little difficult. So we'll tighten that up here in just a minute. Let's go ahead and rotate this around and we'll install our last gear here. Now the last gear looks like this, and this is gonna slide on right over the end here just like that. 
We're gonna take a special washer, washer with locking tabs on it and we're gonna go ahead and tighten that down with another nut right on the end here. Now it's gonna look something like this. Both of these, again, are not torqued down yet. I still have to do that, which will require engaging some of the gears, which I will show you guys in my diff install video. But the last thing that we're gonna do here is, is go ahead and bolt down our oil pickup. So there's two steps here. You have to put a gasket inside here. I know it seems kind of counterintuitive to put a gasket inside the, uh, inside the gearbox, but you definitely do need to add one right here. Now keep in mind when you install this, you are gonna need to put a plate on the other side of the case here to hold that in place. All right, so I was gonna tighten these things down and put the speedometer on and do diff stuff tonight, but it's already like 10.30 and I wanna go inside and like watch TV with my wife. So I'm gonna cap it off right here for right now. So this is gonna be effectively the main shaft install video. I hope you guys found it really helpful. I am probably gonna finish the next episode, hopefully this weekend and sometime next week, and, uh, and I'll get that posted for you guys. If you have any questions about what I did in here, let me know in the comment section below, or if you have any guidance, things that I maybe didn't do correctly, put it in the comment section below. I'm always open to feedback, especially if I'm not doing something that I should be. Now, just a reminder, a huge thank you to 7 Mini Parts and to Guessworks. 7 Mini Parts provided the majority of the parts for this episode, and, and Guessworks sent over some really cool bespoke tools that I used in the earlier episodes of this series. Now, I still have more to do, obviously, but I do wanna give you guys a quick update about the Bad Wolf Mini build. Just have a look down here. That right there is the Bad Wolf engine. It's out, it's disassembled, and you might be wondering, Cole, why didn't you do a video on that? Well, to be totally honest with you guys, I was gonna do this whole video on how to install the timing cover, get it retimed, look at the clutch stuff, but let me put it this way. One thing I have run into with this channel, and I didn't, it's something that I didn't even realize would be you know, a thing, and it's that when I do these videos, I'm always teaching, I'm always talking about, you know, how to do this, how to get the best camera angle on this so you can see it, you know, all those different things. And I don't generally get to just kind of dive in and work on my own car. I started working on the engine and all of a sudden it was three hours later and I hadn't filmed anything. So I'm really sorry if you guys were looking forward to seeing some of that stuff, but I kind of just got in the zone and I wanted to just kind of enjoy working on my car again. So don't worry though, I will be doing some videos about putting it back in. I will do a recap on what I did on the engine once it's back put together. And, I, and I've got some kind of cool stuff that's coming in the pipe. Uh, so, you know, if you follow me on Instagram, you should see it there. But yeah, I'll stop blabbing on. One thing before I go, there are two new stickers and they are selling out really quick. So if you wanna pick up a new DIY crew or Mini Preservation Society sticker, check those out on the merch store. They are selling out fast. And, and once they're gone, I won't get any more in for another two to three weeks. So other than that, until next time, enjoy those minis and motor on.